Okay, uh, so good afternoon everybody. I'm Yannes and today we will talk about Ionic. A little bit about me, so I'm a computer science uh, student at this university and my passion is web development. Uh, I have transitioned mainly into the JavaScript world, so I like working with frameworks like Angular or Io Ionic, uh, React and so on. Um, my second passion is uh, using the same web skill set to build um, mobile applications. And this is where our Ionic comes into play. I'm also a Udemy instructor. I have a course on Angular material. If you're interested, uh, it's free. You can check it out. So let's begin with a story. Uh, let's imagine that this is you on the left. You are a web developer. Uh, let's call you Peter. And your boss says, let, um, so we have this web application and it's getting really popular, but we would like to target the mobile users too. So we need a mobile app. So Peter built me a mobile app for iOS and Android. Like, no pressure, you have like two weeks. And you are like, damn. Uh, I know that for me to be able to build a native app, I need to learn, so for Android and iOS, I need to learn uh, Java and Swift but I don't have time for this. Is there another way? And yes, there's another way. You could make use of uh, hybrid mobile applications. These are the mobile applications built with web technologies. Now to understand better uh, what are the hybrid apps, let's take a look at uh, three most commonly used uh, mobile app architectures. So on the left side, we have the most typical native app architecture. Uh, for example, we have a lot of these apps in the app stores. We can download them and they run directly on the operating system and device. And on the other hand, on the right side, we have this web app. This is um, where our applications run in the web browser on the device. So we have operating system and device. A level of abstraction is the web browser and our app is running in the web browser. So hybrid apps means that we are combining both the native and the web app architectures together. So we have this operating system and device. We have this native wrapper app, which includes a technology called WebView. And this WebView technology is uh, displaying our hybrid application. Uh, so the difference between hybrid and web app is that uh, with hybrid app, we can access the native device functionality through the plugins. And also, the second thing is that we can uh, generate the application packages with hybrid apps. So we can generate the APK for Android and upload it to the App Store. So Ionic, uh, how many of you, I want to know how many of you has heard of or worked with Ionic already? OK, quite a few. So Ionic is one of the most popular hybrid mobile app frameworks. Um, the current version is version 3, and it's fully cross-platform, it's open source, and we can generate applications for Android, iOS, and Windows. So earlier we mentioned these uh, plugins, so we access the, new, the native device functionality through plugins, and this is called Ionic Native. And when we are building the Ionic applications, we are using the Angular framework. So people used to doing some web, uh, web apps, can start with uh, mobile apps really quickly. One cool thing about Ionic is that it uses platform-specific styling. So we are building our app, and when we are running it on the Android, it will use the material design styling. Um, and when we uh, get started with Ionic, we use the Ionic CLI. The preferred way is to use the Ionic CLI tool. This is a command line tool uh, similar to Angular CLI to scaffold, run, and test our project, our Ionic project. So let's take a look at the few of the most commonly used uh, Angular, uh, this Ionic CLI commands. So to get started, we run the Ionic start command. This will uh, scaffold our app. Uh, and we append the name of the application and the template to use. We can use just the blank template or use some of the predefined uh, templates. Since this uh, Ionic CLI is the same tool for the first version of Ionic, which uses AngularJS, and the second version, which uses uh, Angular, we append the v2 flag to generate the new, newest one. Um, 
so when we are developing our app, we want to generate these pages. Pages are like components in Angular, uh, just some sites in our application, and we run the Ionic generate page and the name of this page. Uh, this will create a structure, so it will create a separate folder with about name, and it will create three files. The first one is the TypeScript for logic, the second one is SAS for styling, and the third one is uh, HTML for the template. And so when we are developing Ionic applications, we develop it in the desktop, so we run our application in the browser. Uh, we uh, run this Ionic serve command, which will spin up the web server and display our application in the browser. Uh, so um, we save some changes and it will automatically re recompile and refresh. So Ionic Native, we said that Ionic Native is uh, connected with the plugins to access the native functionality and Ionic Native is just a set of TypeScript wrappers for our Apache Cordova plugins. Uh, many of you probably know the Apache Cordova, which is the de facto standard for uh, hybrid applications, and it provides us an access to this uh, native de device APIs. So Ionic Native is just a wrapper which wraps these uh, plugins in promises and observables to be used in the Ionic application. Uh, let's take a look at one code sample how to use uh, one of the plugins from the Ionic Native. So we search this Ionic Native suite and we find this camera plugin. Uh, so we are calling from the template, we have, let's say, a button, and we call this um, method here. So on take picture is a method which has some camera options in it, a const with camera options. These are the settings uh, for this uh, TypeScript plugin. Uh, so we are setting the quality of image. This is from 1 to 100. We set the 10 and the destination type. We set it. Here we have a, a lot of options. We have like, um, we can save the image taken to the file or to the data URL. And data URL means that it will generate a base64 uh, image string. Uh, we set the encoding type, which is JPEG, and the media type of picture. And then we just call uh, this camera.getPicture. We pass the camera options, and this will, start the, this will start the plugin on the device. It will open the camera dialog, and we can take a picture. Uh, since this is a promise, it will return some image data on this successful um, event. And uh, in the case of error, it will just console it out. Ionic view. This is another part of this whole Ionic suite, and it's um, an app. We can download it from uh, App Store or Google Play. It's meant for testing our Ionic applications. Um, this is kind of a special application because it's meant for development purposes only. Um, this is because some of the Ionic native plugins does not work in this application, so this is just for quick live testing. Um, <coughs> Once we do, this is another command from the CLI, once we do Ionic upload, we will get this app ID. This is just a unique app ID of our Ionic application. And we can share this with our friends, family, or colleagues. Uh, all they need to do is to download this app, and we can show them the live progress of our development of Ionic application. And the app looks like this on the right side. We have this. Um, container and these are our applications. So Ionic is not just one product, it's not just a framework, but it's a whole platform. Uh, we have some additional, um, these are not open source, but additional services to use with our Ionic development. And the first one, uh, for example, is Auth, which is a service for authentication. We can use email and password authentication or the social providers logins like Facebook or Google. Uh, the second one is deploy. This is a service, a kind of special one, because um, here we can skip the app stores. Um, in a typical scenario, we must build our application every time, so build an application package and upload it to the app store again. But here we can um, do some updates without this process. We can do update it via the Ionic servers. 
Um, the next one is push. This is for push notifications. It can be used with some uh, Ionic native plugins to display the uh, notification. And the last one is package. Uh, this can be used, for example, I have a Windows machine and I cannot build iOS apps, iOS application packages, and I could use this uh, building in the cloud to do that. Okay, story time number two. So um, our web developer, Peter, is developing his Ionic application. Everything goes smoothly, uh, but he has a problem. Like, um, he would like to have some backend services, some um, server to post data to or uh, fetch some data from, uh, and the whole authentication, database, and hosting, and everything, but he has no time to develop this himself. So he asked a friend, and the friend, uh, who is also a web developer, recommends him using Firebase as a solution. How many of you has heard of Firebase? Good. Uh, so Firebase is a product, uh, a suite of products owned by Google, and it uh, provides us real-time database, authentication, hosting, and many more services. It can be seen as a backend as a service bus, and uh, when we are using Firebase, we can use just some of the features from uh, this list, like we could have our own user database, and we use um, Firebase just for hosting, or maybe some uh, Facebook authentication, or we can use the whole suite. And when we combine Firebase with Angular, we get this cool uh, library called Angular Fire 2, which uh, just wraps the Firebase Web SDK in the Angular style. OK, let's take a look at um, how to use Angular Fire 2 library for password login. So um, imagine we have a form uh, with some email and password. We need to input uh, these two uh, things. And uh, we have this on login method, which is called. Uh, here we are referencing this Angular Fire library, and we are calling the login method on the out. Um, and here we are just passing the email and password from the login form. And in the second parameter, you can see that we are specifying the provider and method of authentication. This is because uh, the Firebase authentication supports a wide range of uh, authentication methods. We can have this uh, email and password authentication, the anonymous authentication, or the social providers logins like Facebook and Google. And this is also a promise. So in the successful uh, um, uh, event, we, we can just redirect a user to the home page, like in our case. And in the case of error, we just console it out. So um, Firebase Cloud Storage is another product of this Firebase suite. And uh, we will integrate this in our application. So uh, we will uh, take a look at this. So uh, cloud storage is meant for the storing and serving files, the user-generated content, like photos and videos, to the Firebase storage. Uh, the thing about these Firebase uh, products is that they uh, integrate really well between themselves. Uh, and this cloud storage is no exception. It integrates really well with uh, Firebase authentication. And we can specify that, for example, only uh, locked in users can, um, can post some uh, images or uh, video to the storage. If you want to tweak uh, some additional details about this uh, cloud, cloud storage uh, security rules, we have a special uh, rules uh, tab in the um, Firebase console. OK, let's take a look at our last code sample. This is uh, where we upload our picture taken from uh, this camera plugin to the Firebase cloud storage. So uh, after taking a picture, we have this on upload picture method, which we call. And the first thing we need to do with the Firebase cloud storage is to get the reference to the storage bucket of our uh, Firebase instance. So we are getting the storage reference here. And we uh, next need to get the image reference. This tells us where our image will be saved. 
In our case, this is slash images slash user ID. So we are taking this from the authentication. And uh, it will be saved as a profile.jpg. And uh, if you remember from before, we exported our uh, picture as a base64 string. And we are just calling the image ref.put string. So we're putting this uh, string uh, and specifying that this is the base64 format. And we are calling the cloud storage API. And this is also a promise. So we will get back the saved picture object. And this saved picture object has a property called download URL. And we can use this download URL of the image to display it in the, our Ionic application. So we will get this image tag with the source, and we will point it to the download URL. And in case of error, we uh, for now console it out. So, Peter has developed his Ionic application. He integrated some Firebase services like authentication and um, this cloud storage. And he created his first working prototype. Uh, now I prepared the demo. So I showed you some of the code samples um, between the slides. And this is all uh, put together in the application which uh, is available on GitHub in this repo. And if you remember from before, we have this Ionic View application. And you can check this application out by downloading the Ionic View application and writing this app ID inside. Uh, now I prepared, I uploaded to YouTube some uh, screencast of how this app should work. And I will tell you. So we have this Ionic View application and our webcam application is inside. We click View App to load the application. And here we can see the login screen. And now I will enter uh, the email and password. And I will make a mistake for the password. And you will see the um, Firebase will provide us with response. Um, the whole response for the wrong password, the uh, invalid user, and so on. We didn't have to do anything of uh, this kind. So now I log in. I will uh, call this uh, upload. I will click on upload a picture. This will open the camera dialog, the plugin from Apache Cordova. And now I will save the image in the cloud storage. I will click on upload a picture again. Uh, I will take another picture, and this will override this uh, profile.jpg file in the cloud storage. And now I will show you that this is really persistent. I will log out and log in back again. And our picture should be there. It's stored under the user ID slash profile JPEG. OK. And yeah, you can find the whole source code in the GitHub, GitHub there. Cool. That's it for my talk. Thank you. Is it free or uh, does they offer a commercial version? Uh, so um, Ionic is open source. It's free to use. Um, if you want some additional services, we have these uh, Ionic services. These are the paid ones. So uh, they make money of these services. So um, we have like a subscription for the enterprise version of Ionic, which just includes some of these uh, uh, additional services. But the base is uh, free, and we can use it. Uh, just like actual native applications. As a native, not, but um, there are some ways um, the people at Ionic are including some uh, things like service workers and um, stuff with progressive web apps. And I think they are like targeting the whole. Uh, so they, are, they would like to have an Ionic app for uh, the web okay. and for the mobile, the same one. 
but um, this is um, just for mobile now because we are using this Apache Cordova plugin. How is it for performance? Because I've used uh, Angular 2 with sort of the web app, and it is slightly lagging sometimes. So how does it work mobile? Uh -huh. um, so these things are not for the like really uh, performance needed apps like uh, some gaming apps or some highly data visualization apps. But uh, for most cases, they, they work quite OK. It's like difference for the low-end devices and um, high-end. But with the progression of this, um, so this native container web view is constantly evolving. Uh, and uh, the performance gets better. 